Hello everyone, this is Dr. Deeksha here. Welcome to a very, very quick video on what is the nomenclature that we use in molecular pathology. You all read so extensively and you see names of genes and chromosomes here and there. I just hope this with this video, we're able to make better sense of what is it we try to, what information it is that we're trying to give you with the nomenclature that we use. So let's begin. First, let's start with the chromosome. So a chromosome can be described or a location of a gene on a chromosome can be described in the following ways. First, we'll give you the chromosome number. Second, we'll mention the arm. The arm can be short or long, short, petite, so P, and then the next alphabet was Q, hence the long arm became Q. Next, we'll describe the region. So the short arm and the long arm are both going away from the centromere, divided into regions. Then the band, and then we'll put a decimal point and give you the subband. Okay, so remember chromosome number, arm, region, band, and subband. Let's apply this to a location. So this is your chromosome location, 22Q12.2, the gene location on this chromosome. So what does this mean? This means that we're talking about the 22nd chromosome, long arm of this chromosome, Whatever we are discussing is in the first region of the long arm, the second band of the first region, and then after the decimal point, there's two, so subband two of the second band, right? So this will give you exactly what the location of the gene in question is. Now let's go out a little further and look at a karyotype. A karyotype can be used to give you information about the numerical or the structural changes. First, let's talk about the numerical changes. Look at this. I'm sure you know the diagnosis, but what does this, this denote, uh, what's written nomenclature, what does it mean? So, 47XX plus 21 is telling you 47 is the total number of chromosomes. It's a female patient who has an extra 21st chromosome. So the diagnosis, of course, is down, but this is what the nomenclature means. Now let's try another one. 47XXY. Again, I'm sure you know the diagnosis, but what does this nomenclature tell you? It tells you that the total number of chromosomes is more than the normal, so one extra, 47. It's a male patient, the Y chromosome, but there's clearly an extra chromosome, right? So of course, the extra X chromosome. So what's the diagnosis? Klein-Felter syndrome. So these were simple, right? Now let's take it one step ahead. All right, so now look at this one. 46 XS del 5P. So what does this mean? First of all, this means that the chromosome number is fine. So this is not a numerical issue. This is a structural issue. So what does it mean? It means that there's total number of chromosomes, 46 normal female patient who has a deletion in the chromosome. In, in the karyotype. Which deletion? 5P. Short arm of the fifth chromosome is deleted. Do you have a diagnosis? What's the diagnosis? Diagnosis is Creduchat syndrome. This patient is a female patient with Creduchat syndrome. Right? Now let's try another one. 46XYI17Q. All right? So let's see what this could mean. 46 tells you the total number of chromosomes. XY male, isochromosome has been formed from the long arms, Q, long arms of the 17th chromosome. Next, I'm, I'm stepping it up one by one so that you can build up your identification. So 46XXT28Q21P13. Oh my God, sounds scary, but let's break it down. So now let's see what this means. It's the total number of chromosomes is 46, so that's fine. It's a male patient. T tells you that there's been a translocation. 28 tells you that there's been a translocation between the second and the eighth chromosomes. This doesn't necessarily mean the order. It just tells you that there's been a balanced translocation between the two. And the locations further tell you exactly where the break has happened. So in the second chromosome, the break has happened in the long arm, region 2, band 1, so Q21. 
and the second tells you about the second chromosome so the break in the chromosome 8 has happened at the short arm p13 so region 1 band 3 so that gives you the exact location of what has happened where with these chromosomes all right now let's move on to mutations so we saw how a chromosome is named or a location on a chromosome is named then we saw how karyotypes can be described now let's look at mutations and let's just quickly see some letters that you'll come across a lot at the level of dna when a mutation is described and it's in a coding region we say c we can also describe a mutation at the level of protein when it's denoted by p and we can also describe it at the level of rna where it's denoted by r we can also do a G for genomic and M for mitochondrial DNA, but I'm not going into all of that here. And here also, I'm just going to talk about how we describe it mostly at the level of DNA and in some places at the level of protein. So let's go ahead. Look at this. This is a missense mutation. That means that there's been a change, right? The change has happened in the, in the sequence. So the change is in the form of a base substitution or it's in the form of a switch from something to something right so look at this nomenclature in front of you looks scary braf c17990 something av600 uh, all right so let's make sense of this now let's make sense of this miss sense mutation all right so the first is the gene so braf is of course as i'm sure all of you know is the name of the gene C, you will recall, I told you, is the coding region, right? 1799 is the location of the nucleotide or the nucleotide location in this entire coding region that we're talking about. And at this location, this original base, thymine, has been changed to a new base, adenine. So this is your entire mutation that has happened at the level of DNA. And when something happens at this level, what will happen to the amino acid this v valine is the original amino acid and 600 tells you the position in the protein chain of this amino acid and this has now changed to a new amino acid so this is a non-conservative missense mutation and this denote denotion is at the level of protein right so this is a complete way that we can describe the mutation in say BRAF gene now let's look at another one. So I've just made up this mutation, um, ABC gene, all right? And this is a deletion mutation, all right? So look at this nomenclature and let's make, see if you can figure out what it could mean. All right, so see it again and see if you can figure out what it means. And now let's see what it means. ABC is the name of the gene. C stands for the fact that we're looking at a coding region nucleotide locations from 66 to 71 right and then del says deletion so what has happened here is that there's been deletion of nucleotides from the 66th to the 71 location all right simple next now look at this one and tell me what could have happened here it says insertion something similar can be found in the denotion of the gene change all right what does this mean this means that the gene is ABC gene. C stands for the coding region. 76 to 77 means we are talking about something between the 76 and the 77th nucleotide. INS tells you that there's been an insertion and T tells you what has been inserted. So T has been inserted between the 76th and the 77th chromosome. And of course, this will change the reading frame and there'll be a frame shift mutation. All right. So this was my attempt to quickly go through some nomenclatures for you. I hope this helps when you're reading. And uh, please like, subscribe, and share Path of Doodles. Uh, and leave a comment and tell me how you find this useful. I wish you all the best. I hope everyone's keeping safe. And I will see you soon.